I've had requests to discuss the photo quality of the chroma, so here's a video designed to illustrate that. The camera on the chroma is advertised as having a pretty high megapixel count, 16 megapixels on the box. But we know that, in reality, the quality of a camera system is more than just megapixels. Pixels can be blurred due to lens defects, distortion, diffraction, bare grid filters, compression, etc. In short, not all pixels are created equally. Here, I've taken photos under bright, sunny conditions. In the case of the chroma, like many wide-angle lenses, the center of the image looks pretty sharp, but there are defects in the edges. The farther away you get from the center of the frame, the less sharp the image is. In this frame, this is symbolized by the fluorescent green and orange ovals. Everything inside the green oval is relatively sharp, and everything outside the orange oval is not very sharp. Here I have zoomed in on the white box in the prior frame to give a better view of the relative sharpness. Now just how much detail does the image have in the center? I've zoomed way in on a few objects near the center of the frame to illustrate this. Here you can see some spools near the center of the frame. When it comes to details, you can see that there is a missing board in one of the spools, and if you look closely you can actually make out the mounting holes in the center, and so on. Here's another set of spools near the center of the frame. Again, the quality is similar. Keep in mind this image is only a few hundred pixels wide, scaled to fit the screen, so we're bumping up against the pixel density too when it comes to the detail. Finally, here is the Z-shaped structure in the center of the field. Here we can still see the center mounting hole in the spool. We can make out the individual white marks and so on. Now here is a more typical photo taken from the chroma at a few hundred feet up. Pretty typical quadcopter photo that you see a lot of online. And this is the expected result. The area inside the fluorescent green oval is sharp, the area outside the orange oval isn't. The area between the O2 ovals is mixed. It might be usable or not depending on the subject matter and your needs. Finally, here's a crop near the center of the frame. The white line is part of the white box in the original photo. I have left it there for reference. Here, it looks like with this level of detail, we might be bumping up against some JPEG compression artifacts, as well as some noise around the edges. You can make out some features of the houses, like individual windows, but many are somewhat blurred over. Finally, this is an illustration of what this means from a megapixel's point of view. Out of the advertised 16 megapixels, we have roughly 4.6 megapixels of relative clarity around the center, and another 4.4 megapixels that are just okay, may be acceptable or may not be acceptable. Then we have several megapixels on the outer parts of the frame that aren't too usable. Kind of like the advertised 30 minute flight time, which in reality is closer to 20 minutes. Other caveats with the photo setup is the lag. You push a button to take a photo, and a few seconds later you get the message that a photo was taken. This might be fine for scenic landscape shots, sunsets, or things like overhead family photos, but this also means it is pretty difficult to get action shots or any kind of shots that rely on very specific timing. If you're trying to capture these types of photos, action sports or the like with the chroma, your best bet is to get the 4K version and suit video, then choose individual frames from the video to your liking. Finally, at the end of this video, I've included close-up 1-to-1 pixel zooms of two additional photos.